Solar energy has come down in price enormously over the past 10 years. In fact, solar panel prices have actually come down by 30% in the last three months alone. But before that, prices have come down 85% over the last decade. One of the reasons for this is an increase in solar density or an increase in the amount of power we can get from a single solar cell. Other reasons are a decrease in the cost of the raw materials going into solar panels. That's another story. Researchers have just created a tandem solar cell that set a new efficiency world record. And this points to one thing. The cost of solar will continue to fall. And it is right now, it's in free fall. Whilst the cost of coal generation either stays the same or becomes more expensive. Today, the biggest coal power plant in Australia shut down. It was replaced by solar panels and wind generation. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Isn't this great news? I love these kinds of stories. I hope you do too. I hope you've had an amazing week. It's just this kind of news. It's so, such a, a privilege to bring you this kind of incredible news because you know what? Coal power sucks. If you want to know how bad it sucks, I made a video recently on the toxic effects that it causes to people. If you live near a coal power plant, yeah, just freaking move before you get cancer or you become really sick because the stuff is terrible. So solar replacing coal can't happen fast enough. And if solar continues to drop down in price and the efficiency continues to improve, then what happens is coal power plants get replaced even faster. Making solar cells more efficient is an obvious win for green energy. It means more electricity from the same number of panels and the same amount of sunlight. And scientists are working really hard to solve these challenges. And in fact, they are solving them. They are solving them. Solar panel efficiency continues to improve. Now a team from the University of Science and Technology in Saudi Arabia has achieved a record level of efficiency with what's known as a tandem solar cell one that combines two different materials. Now these solar cells are actually com commonly used today, so it's not some sort of weird technology. Several materials can work in solar panels, each with its own properties and characteristics. They vary in efficiency, cost, and how easy it is to build them into solar panels reliably and at scale. In this case, the KAUST University researchers combine the more common and cheaper crystalline silica material with the more efficient but less reliable perovskite material to hit an efficiency level of an incredible 33.2%, up from the previous record of 32.5% for this particular type of cell. Now, currently, most commercially available panels are hitting between 23 to 24%. But because they've actually used the cheaper materials in this solar cell to hit this record, it means there is a good chance that within the next couple of years, we'll see the efficiency of solar panels come closer to this 30% mark, which will make a massive difference in the output people get from solar panels. That might seem like a relatively small percentage gain, but it's not when you extrapolate it across millions of solar panels, millions of cells, and years and years of sunshine. Keep in mind, most of the world's population lives in what is known as the Sun Belt, areas where the world gets a very large amount of sun. Of course, this isn't yet ready for commercial use, unfortunately, but you get the idea. It very well may be soon. Efficiency is measured as a power conversion efficiency, or PCE, where 100% would mean all the available sunlight is converted into electricity with nothing lost. The record was verified by the European Solar Test Installation. So it's legit. This is not a fake record. It actually really happened. This new record is the highest PCE of any two junction solar cell under non-concentrated light, attesting the tremendous promise of perovskite silicon tandems to deliver ultra high performance photovoltaic modules, which is critical to rapidly achieving renewable energy goals towards combating climate change, says material scientist Stefan de Wolf from KAUST. We're seeing the perfect storm here. This, this is actually the perfect storm because whilst the energy efficiency of these cells continues to go up almost every year, we're also seeing a perfect storm in terms of materials prices. The prices of these materials that are being used in these exact 
cells have come down by 40 to 50% this year. Crazy. If you combine that with the fact that the three largest panel manufacturers in the world, which are all located in China, are all having an aggressive price war, this means governments, corporations, and energy companies are simply getting rid of old gas and coal power plants at a faster and faster rate. The new tandem cell works to record-breaking levels, partly because the top material, the perovskite material, absorbs blue light the best, or the lower silicon material absorbs red light best. This spectrum coverage means more of the available sunlight can be captured and converted. However, the team hasn't offered many more details as, well, you wouldn't, would you? If you had this technology, why would you just go and tell everyone else exactly how you did it? About how the record was achieved. As yet, there's no peer-reviewed paper on the technology, but there will be soon. The team is continuing to work on improving the working lifespan of the cell and its size, which have traditionally been issues with perovskite. So in other words, the team are working on not only the efficiency, but on how many years you can actually use this in a solar panel. You'll see different efficiency records for different types of solar cells. You probably have, it's a bit confusing. For example, scientists have achieved an impressive 47.1% efficiency with a cell of six layers rather than two. But as you can imagine, a six layer cell is much more expensive to manufacture than a two layer cell. And the sunlight needs to be highly concentrated to actually reach the lower levels of that cell. More materials though means more complexity for manufacturers and more cost. Therefore, this cell with only two layers is a much better solution to the world's energy needs. Still, progress is heading constantly in the right direction. More and more money is being invested into solar panel technology. This means solar energy will play an ever increasing role in the world's energy needs. Now, remember, only a hundred years ago, most of the world, the Western world, meaning the United States, Europe, and Australia, didn't actually have access to electricity. That changed very quickly, but there's still many countries worldwide that don't have electricity. Due to technology like this and continued cost declines, I think that will all change within the next 10 to 20 years. And that, my friends, is a good thing. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching.